Hey everyone, Tidewater Fishing Tour here. And today I've got a special video for you all. I've decided to take all my experience in fishing and share my favorite lures with you. So today I'm going to show you my top three panfish lures and my top three bass lures. Uh, so let's just get it started. Number three panfish lure is this. It's a mini crankbait. What I like about these is that they only dive a few feet down and they the lip on it helps it have a weird cool action and uh, it really attracts the the bluegill and the crappie and all the different panfish in the area. I've had a lot of luck with this. I think in the first video I did I caught a few fish on this. Really indispensable. You can use it really anywhere. It The only downfall on this is that it tends to snag easily, especially with the two treble hooks. But other than that, it's a really solid lure. Number two is, it might be my favorite, but it's not the most effective. It's just fun to use. I take a 1 16th or 1 8th ounce jig head with a little tiny hook. And I like to put a Crappie Max salt tube on it. I'm getting salt all over my desk. But anyway, you kind of just hit it in the top, turn it down, put it up the hook, let it stick out the bottom, push it up over the thingy that holds it, and then you've got it. Uh, it's kind of hard to cast this with a bigger rod or even a smaller rod. So what I like to do is rig two of these up on my line, one on the bottom and one about a foot or a foot and a half above that. Uh, the cool thing about this, it, it, doing it that way, is you can have something lower in the water column and something kind of in the middle of the water column. And then you just jig it up and down and, um, and reel it in slowly and you're sure to get bites on this one. Number one is a recent discovery of mine. I've always, I've always liked using that jig method, but my younger brother actually turned me on to these. But this is an inline spinner. I don't know if it'll focus. There we go. It's an inline spinner. A lot of people call them rooster tails, but it's literally just a piece of metal with a spinner, spinner blade, and a treble hook and Sometimes it'll have the skirt, sometimes it won't. It really doesn't make much of a difference, but I have caught a lot, a lot of fish on this. Uh, the cool thing is you can catch small bass with this. I've caught a pickerel. Um, I've also caught a really big bluegill on this. So it's a really versatile bait. Uh, they make bigger ones uh, to catch bass too. So this one is the number one, but I have to mention it. The true number one is a piece of night crawler on a little tiny hook with a split shot and a bobber on top. Can't beat it. Live bait, especially with panfish, is always best. So those are the three panfish baits that I'd recommend. Now on to the bass baits. <coughs> 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 Alright, now on to bass. So Bass fishermen all have techniques that they swear by, they all have lures that they swear by, but in my opinion, these are the three lures that do the best in most situations. Of course, there are situations where you need different baits, uh, there are situations where any bait can be used, but these are the ones that I've had the most luck with. And number three is the lipless crankbait. What I like about this bait is how versatile it is. You've got, obviously, you've got the two treble hooks hanging on the bottom. And that's it. I mean, you've got all kinds of designs. I like to use the blue with uh, red belly. Um, it's done the best for me. Cool thing about it is you can get this thing to dive pretty deep, even without a lip. And it, it has a fantastic action. It just wiggles back and forth, and it causes that... Um, 
that kind of silvery finish to flash under the sun and that that will definitely attract some big bass what i like about it is that it's not very prone to snagging i know you've got the treble hooks on the bottom but that's really it and it glides right through the grass i've caught some pretty big fish on this and i'm sure later on as this channel grows you're going to see me catch a lot more so i really like the lipless crankbait the only downfall with this is in the the dead of the summer this doesn't quite dive deep enough and that's when I'll use something like a crankbait or I'll just stick to my other two choices so my number two which might be controversial because a lot of people swear by this one as their number one is the simple Texas rig so you take any bait in this case a worm with a weird tail I honestly don't use this that much and you use just a regular worm hook I like to use usually two or three aught uh, just to catch you know two three pound bass and all you need to do if it'll focus is hook it through the tip only as far as this little bar goes so you just hook it a f just a few millimeters and then you cut it through pull it down till it's on that bar turn it around and then you kinda eyeball where it's gonna where it should stab through so it'll come out straight so in this case it's on this line And that's it. And then what you do is you make sure you've got a weight on the line directly above it. I like to use a really small weight. I don't know exactly what this is, but it's really tiny. And what that does is that gives it some weight on the top. So when you cast it out, and it, it'll sink quickly. And then you can kind of just jig it up. Cool thing about this is that you can use it in any situation. Deep, shallow, a lot of grass, no grass, a lot of cover. It tends not to snag because there's only a little bit of that hook exposed. This is really good in the dead of summer. The fish are really lethargic and you want this to kind of sink down a lot. You want it to, you can make it move fast, you can make it move slowly. Especially when the bass are spawning, this is a really good option because you can make this thing go crazy under the water and get those big fish to bite. So number two is the Simple Texas Rig. Number one, which you've all been waiting for. This is my favorite simply because it was the first artificial lure that caught me a bass a couple years ago. And it's, it's really foolproof, but it's also the best lure if you're lazy. And I'm a lazy person. So the reason why I say that is you don't have to really set the hook. I still do. You don't have to. You just have to reel in once you feel it bite. But my favorite is the Wacky Rig. So the Wacky Rig starts with a circle hook. So I believe this is a 3 aught circle hook. 2 aught's good too. Anything smaller than that is kind of useless because any size bass can bite onto a 2 aught hook. So you take the two odd hook and you take a Senko. In this case, I said a Senko, but this is uh, a dinger from Yum. I like to use watermelon seed. That's my favorite color. So what you do is you just take the dinger, <laughs> you take your circle hook, and you hook it in the middle. It doesn't have to be perfect. I like to offset it a little bit. You just hook it through the middle, and you just let it sit just like that. The way that this works is you cast it out and it's going to fall slowly. It's weightless. So it's just it's gonna fall as it falls this kinda comes up. It's very gentle action and what you do is you kinda give it a few tugs let it fall. Give it a few tugs let it fall and reel in slowly. I don't know why 
but this has gotten me the most bass in my life. It's, it's just effective. It's perfect. So another good thing about it is it's not weedless, but it, it's not prone to, to getting snagged too often uh, in the weeds. There are hooks that come with uh, weed blockers. It's basically little pieces of plastic that come down over the hook and keep weeds from getting inside the hook, um, hook eye, I guess you would call it, or hook mouth. There is one drawback to this, is that it gets expensive quickly. These things break easily. One or two fish and your, your worm's gone. So what a lot of people will do is they'll buy rubber o-rings that they'll put around here and slip the hook under the o-ring. Even that though, tends to tear these pretty easily just because they, because they clamp down uh, tightly and can actually cut through uh, the worm, especially when you're tugging on a fish. But really, you know, once you get a bite, you can ins you can immediately start reeling, um, and that should that usually hooks them. But um, I always use just a good quick hook set upward. So there you have it. Those are my top three bass lures. Thank you to everybody that's been watching this channel, and please hit the like and subscribe buttons, and tell all your friends about Tidewater Fishing Tour. Thank you.